McKay and Vogel here at the 2024 Farm Progress Show where there is plenty to bark about and we are in the dog days of summer. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Martin Till. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. We are here at the Farm Progress Show. Another beautiful day in Boone, Iowa. And as we saw there in the intro from McCain, you, you never know what you're gonna see here at the show, but you always know that you're gonna see some type of new no-till innovation. And that's what McCain has right now, a new road cleaner for Martin Till. And McCain, tell us all about it. All right, I'm standing in front of these soybean plants here, and it's a good reminder that when you're planting soybeans, or any crop for that matter, it's important for no-tillers to have a good row cleaner. So right now, we're gonna to toss it off to Steve Martin with Martin Till to tell you about their walking tandem frame-mounted row cleaner. That's the walking tandem mode. It follows all the ground contours. If you need to carry it in looser ground, like uh, you can just turn that T-handle and select a notch. There's numerous positions you can lock it in, and now it's controlling the depth of the row cleaner through the parallel linkage, which is also active, of course, when it's in tandem mode. So, got a lot of moving points there. Uh, we're really excited that this product is going to, uh, it's going to be a game changer in frame mounted products. We're going to be in beta this spring. Still, uh, just today is the uh, first time it's been shown. So we're, we're really excited about this product. And, you know, if anybody's interested in running it in beta, you know, I suggest get with your dealer sooner rather than later. Thanks a lot, McCain. We'll check back in here in a little bit. It is hot out here, 90 degrees we're pushing. So let's head inside and cool off into the very technologies tent we go in. And we came across this Redicop Harvest Weed Seed Control Unit. Eric Schuler shows us how it could be a game-changing tool for your weed fighting arsenal. So as the combine goes to the field, the cab is gonna be this direction and then this is gonna be the backside of the combine. So as the sieves process that material, it's gravity fed into the hopper that you see here. And these are going to be spinning at about 2800 RPM to 3000 RPM. So it's a very high horsepower machine, but what it does is guides those seeds into this set of rotors and stators, and it's going to crack the seed, damage the seed, basically destroy any germination of that material. That way it's a clean field that's left after that combine goes to the field. So it's a very simple product, but it's also a very effective product. Uh, and so you know, we get a lot of questions and interest on, on growers that are maybe non-GMO type operation, growers that are organic type operation, and we've even sold these into uh, uh, farms that are our traditional corn and soybean that use traditional herbicide programs, whether a two-pass soybean uh, operation or, 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 or whatever. So, uh, so very exciting. Now let's see what's popping inside the Pioneer tent Alex Harrell's in the house and he's a popular guy fresh off his record-breaking 218 bushel soybean yield. We caught up with the Leesburg Georgia strip tiller for more of his top takeaways from a record-breaking summer. Everybody wants a silver bullet and we all know that we don't have that but no it's just the systems approach you know we plan early we try to get in grain fill in those long days before summer solstice and then you know we do a lot of early season management we tissue sample we do a lot of late season management to kind of help increase seed size it paired with having a long grain field days it helps us get those extra seed size which i'm a firm believer in a lot of extra bushels comes from that and then also as we've talked about in the past you know these high yield plots the goal is to kind of learn from them and see what you can apply to more acres correct correct yeah i mean we don't do it just for the high yield plots we want to see what we learn from those, what works, what doesn't work, and we take what does work and apply it to our overall, you know, standard production to see if we can raise our overall farm average, which is what, you know, that's what really matters. And strip till and cover crops, why has that been a winning combination for you on your farm? Yeah, we use the cover crops for erosion purposes. Um, we get a lot of winter rains, and if we don't have that ground covered, we get a lot of washes and erosion areas in the fields. And then we strip into those cover crops in the spring. And we moved outside the Iowa State tent here. And as you can tell, they're getting fired up for college football season here in the Hawkeye State, even though this is the Cyclone guy right here. Right now, I'm going to toss it back to you, McCain. 
Thanks, Noah. All right, well, earlier I had a chance to stop into the Iowa State University tent, and I had a chance to talk with some of their researchers as well as ag tire expert, James Tushner. Let's uh, toss it over to them right now. We're gonna talk a little bit about PSI levels and compaction. So at the lab, what we start measuring is a footprint on an artificial soil ag, tire, ag tires, a different tire inflation pressures, different load. So what we found is when you measure it on an artificial footprint, you're getting two advantages. One, we found out that the footprint is higher about 80% than a hard surface measurement, what everybody was doing. The other thing is with the artificial soil, we are measuring 3D. It's a tire penetrated rut depths, which you cannot measure on a hard surface. Why is it important is doing it in an artificial soil. Our artificial soil mimics about five typical Midwestern type soils in its penetration or sinkage measurement. It mimics very close to a field conditions. Yes. And ag tires, when they are in the field, they deflect, tire deflect, soil deflect. That's the thing that we're doing at the lab with the artificial soil. The advantage of doing it with the artificial soil, it's a repeatable, a repeatable test, and we've been using it r the same consistent behavior almost five years now. We measured in 2019, and we're measuring it every three years its mechanical behavior is consistently the same and it's giving variability within less than 4% in the footprint measurement. So let me just get this straight. So first of all, compared to a flat plate, we've got about 80% difference in really the shear area because of the malleable surface, right? And the yes. physical properties of the tire, correct? Okay. And the other piece of it too with the artificial soil is, is that it's a repeatable format. So it's not like it's one soil, Midwest, Eastern, Southeastern, whatever. It's the same exact every single time and you can repeat the results and you always have a something that is consistent. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, I never get tired of hearing about ag tires, but uh, for now, we're gonna toss it back to you, Noah. Not tired at all after three cups of coffee. Thanks a lot, McCain. Hey, check this out. It's a new autonomous solar powered filling station for Solentech's Solex Ag Robot. Now this will allow the Solex to operate 100% autonomously throughout the season without the need for a manual refill. The official commercial launch of the docking station will be announced soon, but the Solex robot is in its second commercial year and it uses cameras and AI to target spray weeds. It also scans the field to provide data on crop health and pests as well. McCain has his eye on some more precision technology over at the demo fields. Man, he can move fast from the giant tire to the demo field. McCain, take it away. Thanks, Noah. Well, one of the coolest parts about the show is checking out the infield demos. And earlier I had a chance to go over to the AgriSpray drone tent where they were flying drones and showing some demos. Here's exactly how you can use drones to seed cover crops. And here is CEO Taylor Moreland to tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, so this over here, uh, this is the cover crop, well, the granular material um, applicator. So on the bottom there, it's got a spinner disc um, about this big a diameter. You can vary the speed of that, obviously, and vary the height the drone operates at. And then the top, the whole top opens up, so you can fill it with a seed tender, dump buckets or bags in there. It'll hold uh, about 100 to 120 pounds in there. Uh, so overseeding cover crop, that's an application that um, not a lot of guys are doing right now because timing is, is key on that. You gotta, if you're putting out radishes or turnips or, or clover or whatever you're doing, small seeded cover crops, you gotta do it early. You gotta do it before your crop comes out of the field. The only way to do that is from the air. Um, and then you gotta wait for a, a week where you've got rain, right, to get it established. And you gotta wait to where you've got, you know, some defoliation starting to occur within the crop. So once it does germinate, then you can get sunlight through the canopy. And if you're trying to coordinate that with a helicopter and airplane, it's very difficult. But if you got a drone on the farm, you can do it yourself. And efficiency is very good with cover crop, where you're putting out you know, 10, 15 pounds per acre with small seeded cover crops, you can cover, well, about 10 acres per tank load uh, in about a 10 minute time frame. That's gonna be revolutionary uh, when we look at uh, cover crop overseeding and especially some of the carbon credits um, that guys are looking at now too. Well, great stuff there, McCain. I think we could both agree the future of Conservation Ag is so bright. You need, you need shades. shades. For Conservation Ag Update, 
I'm McCain Vogel. And I'm Noah Newman. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next year in Decatur, Illinois.